What's up, everybody? Welcome to the stream. Welcome to the YouTube video. This is day 399 making Songbringer. Freaking 399 non consecutive days. This is actually a few years into the development. A few years? No, just a year and a half or so. Uh, okay, so today I'm making um, an enemy that's going to go inside the so the swordless dungeon. The first swordless dungeon has no enemies. This one, I'm gonna have some a few enemies. I like things, to, but they're not really typical enemies. One of these enemies is just gonna be a kind of person that I'm not even sure that this enemy might actually be invincible. Like there's no way to kill it. Um, <clears throat> and there's gonna be another enemy that steals stuff from you. So um, I'm gonna put the player back in the, the place where we could put this enemy. I could. Uh, Five five five, I think. Five five five. That's a great location. Five five five. Five 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 four seven zero nine. Wait, it's definitely not it, is it? All right. Um. Okay. So the next thing we need to go and find a place where we can put um. This enemy. All right. Yeah. This is working good. This. This whole puzzle. Here. I mean, this might be a good place to put this enemy, huh? Huh? Um, next thing, I gotta start off a little sheet, I mean a data thing, data foes, it's gonna be kind of like, what enemy is this like? It's, it's like, it moves around, it floats around, it can't collide with anything, it looks like, a doesn't shoot stuff, what does it look like, what we got here, we got a lot of enemies in here, already, uh, I guess I'm just gonna I'm gonna start with the Raz, I guess. Doesn't matter. And uh, this is the shade. This is what this enemy's called. Um, in the next thing I'm gonna do is set up a data point here in foes so I can create this enemy. I think I'm, for now I'll just put him everywhere. Shades. This is gonna be Z three through nine. Only the second swordless dungeon gets this. Uh, three through nine flags has swordless and doesn't have entrance. Doesn't have. Wait, no, we already we already got these covered. It doesn't have puzzle. I might need that, but no. No, puzzle's already covered too. Okay, so yeah, we'll just do some shades. For now, this is just gonna render the raws, so let's see if we've got this enemy here. Or somewhere else in this dungeon? Nope, not on this screen. Oh yeah, there's one. I wonder why I didn't put it in that other room. But, uh, yeah, I guess this room right here is good enough. Oh, yeah, there's one. This is a corridor. I wonder how we got put here. It doesn't matter. I don't think it matters. There's one. Wait, did he... Was there one at the beginning? I just didn't notice. I'm talking to myself. It's fun talking to yourself. I've been in the habit of talking, making video games for years now. It's like... So just talking. Yeah, I don't know why this one doesn't have. Oh well. Save it here. Or maybe maybe we'll save it over here. This is kind of a cool area to uh, be debugging and stuff. What's up, Salad Dogs? Yes, man. Welcome to the stream. I don't feel so lonely now. How you doing, man? What you working on today with your engine? <laughs> yes, nice, right? It does. Alright, we'll start with one shade. We'll open up the shade. It's, um, shade. Okay, when you die, now we don't need that flag. Reflection. 
I don't know if this, has, this guy is going to have a reflection. Maybe a shadow. No. They're going to be kind of translucent, so shadow is probably not necessary. Reflection would be cool, though. Health. Okay, here's the thing. I think these guys are going to be invincible. So I'm just going to do... Maybe they're not invincible. Maybe they're incredibly difficult to defeat. They're like... They have at least 99 hit points. Category foe, also fear. So these guys inspire fear. They cause you to go crazy wonky. It's a decent size to start with. Movement mask. Here's the thing, I don't think they should have any movement mask. They should move very slowly. Imagine how these guys like move like Mega slow and accelerate slowly. They don't path fine because they don't collide with anything. I guess they should have no gravity. They can move in eight directions. We gotta get some art created. Your current goal? Writing a renderer to sit between the game layer and OpenGL. Sweet, man. You're at the renderer phase. That's exciting. Soon you'll have... <clears throat> um, rendering. That's awesome. So he doesn't have a shield. Doesn't shoot. Does seek. Stuck, dur stuck Duran. This guy doesn't ever get stuck. Right. Target any no sound. Wander. Stop. Forget. Those could all be useful. Okay, next up I'm gonna start drawing him. So imagine these are just big old Yeah, they're gonna be big actually. Okay, so the first thing will be proportions. Um, so maybe it might even be a tall. I want to be really tall. So maybe 48 by 64. Graphics tablet time. Hey, Sal Dongs, have you seen um, have you seen the whole channel feed thing with uh, with Twitch? If so, what are your thoughts on it? Is anybody using the channel feed yet? Is that a useful tool or? You technically already drawing stuff, but it's directly via OpenGL. Ah, okay, cool. So you're like, you're basically writing a layer. Yeah, channel feed. So um, channels on Twitch can now have like a, they have like, it's kind of like a blog almost, like you can, it's your feed for your blog or for your Twitch channel and you can like, you can post things and then I think it's supposed to go out to your follow, like your your following will no, will get notified or something like that. I don't know. I'd like to see some thoughts on that, like maybe when some other people are on the stream, I'll ask that again and see, how, see if people are, if anybody's using that and like, if so, how it's going. You know, so easy to make this guy totally black, but I'm thinking maybe brown is actually the tone. Here's a super ugly brown. Ugly brown color, yeah, yeah. Drawing this shade, doesn't matter what his shape is. Just gotta draw him, see how big he is first. <laughs> as ugly as this guy is, this could actually work something like this. I'll make him 50% opaque to start. Whoops. Whoops. Save as sprites, pose, shade, shade, idle. You know what you're talking about? Oh, yeah. 
Oh, hasn't caught on yet. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it might be the kind of, it might be a certain kind of streamer that would benefit from using that or a certain kind of, you know, stream viewers that would, that would, that would enjoy seeing those kinds of updates. I don't know. Save as, you know, one frame. That's all we need is just one frame. This is all I'm going to draw for this guy ever. Not, he's kidding me. This guy can have a cool, like, death animation at least. Shade idle zero. There we go. And then let's get that building the sprite sheet. Hey, I know you didn't build that sprite sheet. Did I export that the right place? Yeah. Bows, right? Shades, yeah. You didn't rebuild. How dare you? All right, we're not going to need any of the Roz's frames, so we'll just start with the shade idle. All right, Let's see if this is the right proportion. Yeah. He's going stop, wander, stop. He likes stopping, that's for sure. Forget. Seek, yeah, seek is good. Seek me. Don't wander. Don't wander. <laughs> Dumbest enemy ever. Oh. Oh. This is so funny. Forget. Wander, stop. Loves forgetting, wandering, and stopping, that's for sure. This kind of explains why the Roz has the it behaves the way it does. Alright. Target any. Brand four, dirt target. I kind of don't even want him to wander. I want him to go directly for the player. Let's take away all these forgets, wanders, all those. I want the feeling of like being chased. What you doing, dude? What's up, Arcane? Welcome, welcome. What's he, what the hell is he doing? He's just stuck. What's up, Jonah? I'm making a new enemy here for the Swordless Dungeon. This is a guy that you're... I want this guy to give you the feeling that you're being chased, and I think he's going to be invincible. So, the Swordless Dungeon isn't really meant to have many enemies in it or co much combat, but I do want this one enemy. Yep, it's a total, it's an enemy that you can't even fight, and when he does get you, he leaves you fearful, so you have to, you, like, you panic and you wander around and stuff. Maybe it's this. Target any Rand 4, let's turn that down to Rand 1. Yep, so the first Swordless Dungeon, no enemies whatsoever. This one, I think, in a few enemies. No, you, you can use your top hat to fight it, but I don't think you can kill it. That's the that's kind of the, the thing about this guy. Is, oh, man, if you have the shield, it's just that you can't even get hit. Unless you're moving. And then you're fearful. Okay, ah, I'm fearful. I don't know where I'm going. So luckily 
Luckily, the proportion was about the right size. <laughs> you can die. You can die in the Soda's dungeon now. Why did I die so fast, though? Oh, because it has fear. Might need to turn that damage down a little. Oh, when I mean you're panicking. So when you get hit by anything with fear, your your controls go crazy. Right? Yeah, this is actually the sprite is actually working. So check us out. If I get hit by it, if I I'm holding down up, see that? And you just you go randomly crazy all around, so I'll do it again. All I'm gonna do is hold up. So that's what panic does. It just basically it messes up all your controls for a little while. And then it also hurts you again when you're when you when it's all said and done. Oh, they're dangerous. <laughs> yes, like leave it as it is, alright. I think I'm just gonna touch up the edges then. It kind of works, right? This is the whole point. This guy is just dangerous. Let's put a few of these. Let's see what it's like with a few of them on here, though. Like, flick like, there four. Ah, see, this is cool. I feel like I'm chased for sure. Ah. Oh, the one thing that I don't want them to do is move on top of themselves. So let's turn on mask foe. That's like the only thing they can't do. Maybe exit too. Yeah, foe and exit. Like a classic fear effect where you lose control and it runs around. It yeah, it it doesn't it doesn't make you run around, but if it changes your controls. Yeah, it totally switches up your controls randomly. So when I get hit, it's just randomizing all my controls, even though I'm pressing I was only pressing down right there. Which makes it dangerous if you get hit a few times. I, I kind of like the way the graphics are too. Let's see what they look like. Yeah, let's turn off the debug. So, wow, this is probably the easiest enemy to create ever. So I think you can hit him, you know. but it is not going to do much good because they have like nine. Like 90, no, not 900, but 99 hit points. Maybe, okay, maybe, maybe actually killing one of these things. Maybe they should have a little less than 200 hit points. Like maybe they should just have 49 to 99 hit points. It's a lot, but still, it's doable. And then they have some special item. It does look like an or Overlord from StarCraft. Slightly bigger hit boxes now. Um, close your eyes. A little taller. Getting hit once is tough. Cause then you're just then you're kind of fucked. Oh, quick death. Cause fear does a lot of damage. Fear is like meant to do more damage because of its own. Actually, maybe it shouldn't for foes. Oh. Yeah, I guess it can. As long as you're careful.
Okay, I'm gonna start touching up the art a little. Uh, that can, can at least hover. And I can at least make the edges look a little more Um, got <laughs> some shady stuff going on here. What's up, Teak? So I'm just gonna make them opaque for a second, so I can touch up the the edges. Get out! Run away! Man, the chat log is really slow for me today. I gotta go get my coat. Stay warm. I don't know about that. He's a shadow of his former self. <laughs> we could go on forever like this. Yeah, this is kind of cool. It gives him like a little veiny look, kind of. Maybe it's a shadow of the past. It's the ghost of Christmas past. You gotta stop being a dick, Scrooge. Help out little Timmy. Poor Timmy. All right, let's see what that looks like. I'm gonna try a little more opaque, 60%, and make him float. You don't know enough English sayings to keep this going. Oh! Oh no! What are we supposed to do? How are we gonna keep the joke train going? You, you devilish enemy shall go in the, the foes folder. Sayings, yeah, you had it right the first time. Sayings with a Y. Shade Idle Ritter. Replace. It looks weird. This can't be right. <laughs> All right, only problem is they're idling too fast. Let's make that idle slower. Zero point.
really fast around these guys if you get hit. affected by physical damage? That's a good question. Maybe they should be totally invincible. Yeah, you know what? I like that. I like that a lot. They're going to be totally invincible. That's kind of the point. I really want these to be an invincible enemy that hurts you, but you can't hurt them. Yeah, okay. See that again. Yeah, so now you try and do this, some physical damage and nothing happens, but you can be hurt by them. You can be fear, you become panicked. Oh, uh, no, that's cool. Maybe they could be just affected by lightning. But that would mean this top hat could hurt them. Let's see what that's like. Or maybe fire? Maybe fire could hurt him too. Yeah, what would they be like if they actually died? Say so they only have one hit point. Okay, so that guy's dead. But yeah, you get no items because there's no jib. Right, I like that. Only lightning. Or anything that casts light, like maybe fire. Let's try, let's try that. Lightning and fire. And I'll draw a simple death animation. I think they just fade out, actually. No, they'll definitely do some kind of like fall on the ground type stuff. Fading out is just kind of weak. Weak saws. What if your top hat's poison? That's a that wouldn't help. That wouldn't hurt him. What's up, Pedro? I mean, there's really no point there even hurt trying to hurt these guys. Like you can't really get an item from them. Maybe ow. Oh, maybe you could get an item from a reward. Like you kill all of them on one screen and they die. Hello, good people of Earth. What's up, Pedro? What are you doing today, man? How'd that interview go?
Oh no, there's a terrorist attack again. Teak, yeah, I did say hi to you, man. Oh, you mean, oh, you're trying to say, why don't you say hi to Pedro, I mean? Goddamn, 80 killed, 100 injured. Ah. Oh. Fuck. Truck ran over a mob? Oh my god. Dude. Oh. Oh my god. Stampede mode. Do they know who did it? Is it ISIS again or? It's been Paris the last few times. Why are they targeting Paris? Oh, it was Nice. Uh.
hard as hell. Okay, I'm gonna leave them like that. They're kind of invincible in the sense that they only can be damaged by lightning and fire. So there we go. There's a new enemy. The Shade. Next thing you just gotta get it so it places um more appropriately. I'm thinking we have a couple different of these shade things. But this one difficulty zero point zero to zero point three three. This is only one shade. And there's only one of these in the whole level. This one's 0 0.33 to 666. And it has two shades. And this one is 666. 1.0. And that's all four shades. It's unfair to people with poison fear ice top hats. Oh, I know, but what's the point? And also, also if you have your bombs, you're good to go, man. If you have ice bomb or you have lightning bombs or fire bombs, or if you have the lightning blink or the fear blink, you can also attack them. So you're good to go. You just have to have something crafted with either lightning or fire to be able to hurt these. So if I had like a lightning blink. Dangerous though with the with the freaking blink. Okay, let me see if that so that guy this guy had one pattern or one there's one shade there. Nothing here. That 
what's that pattern? There's the verloc, or I mean the stairs or whatever. Yeah, I think they should be able to be hurt by the lighter. That's a good question. Let's see if that works. Yeah, totally. That's fun. So if you at least have the lighter, you're, you can fight these guys, technically. They're hard, though, because if you get hit, you start panicking. And when you're panicked, it's hard as hell to control. But there's, there's kind of no point in defeating them, except if there's a, maybe a reward item. Oh, that's a good idea. Maybe I'll set a reward item here on these flags. So, go set flags, reward item. Yeah, it's called it's reward item. Yeah, 400 celebration next time, right? 400 days? That's pretty significant. It's a kind of a, another one of those thresholds. It's a... What's the word for that? Not a coming of age, but like a... What's that word for like... Like for Native Americans when they went out and the... the, the they would have to like survive in the desert on their own. I think maybe this should become some kind of graphical effect to show that Rock is in a panic state. Yeah, it makes your character more dark, but I agree it's not really that clear yet. You can definitely feel it when you're playing. You're like, oh, you totally understand what's going on, but. Yeah, I thought there was a special sound for that too. There is a little sound when you go in and out of that state. So if you do happen to kill all the guys, you get a reward item. So that's pretty cool. Makes it a little more desirable to try and defeat them. I'm trying to find the other guys, if there are any. Oh, there's one. Eating up the rocks. Oh, there's a couple. Oh, there's a couple on the screen. They're scared me. Ah! Yeah, it's um, it's just there's a, there's a sound, but I totally agree with you that that needs to be some kind of better effect. I mean, it does to make your character dark. Um, I don't know if you noticed that, but yeah, you do go darker when you, when you're in a panic state, but there does need to be something that like shows that you're more panicked out because it would help. It would also help enemies if the enemies had some kind of effect like that too. Oh, I got to sign in for that one. I tried to click on your video, Pedro, but I can't sign in on my laptop or on my uh, iPad right now.
I love fighting with the lighter. It's really hard to hit things. Twenty day done. Okay, good. So there's only two screens where we had to fight these guys. It's about what I was thinking. You don't have to fight them. It didn't. It didn't find a place that was appropriate to put the other fourth pat or the third pattern that it could possibly put on here. But that's fine. Um, probably here though. We should put some more of them. Maybe like maybe a lot of them actually on that screen. So. That's mob, mob 30, no, mob, maybe it's boss, yeah, oh, it's boss 3, we go boss 4, Z three through nine. Put some maybe four pulverizers and a lot of shades. Let's put like twenty shades. That's a lot of these guys. Oh my god. Gravity bong and then draw a new character. <laughs> and wearing a hat. All right. I can wear a hat. Hey, why didn't it allow this guy? Why didn't it do this? What are you doing, computer? Oh, it's because I already have the health. So it killed off the other enemies. Okay, put that back to 20. And the life container for dungeon five zero boom. So let's see what this looks like with twenty shades. This could be crazy. Wow, where'd they go? Damn it all the hell. They're not here. Pretty sure it's doing this pattern. Yeah, it's totally doing this pattern. Man. The mystery of why the shades are not here. Maybe in create flows. No, nope, create names. Oh, it's because the boss is already defeated. Forgot about that. When's the next playthrough stream? I don't know. 
I've been holding off on a mi- for a minute doing uh, the live playthroughs because so many people already have the game and stuff. Um, and I've been kind of like just doing them really late at night. So, but maybe I, sh- I could do like one on stream for sure. You guys want me to do one? What's up, Niceros? Is it harder to make a game on Mac that requires extensive graphics quality? No. It's not any more difficult than it would be to make it on Windows. Is that what you mean? Bosses, bosses. Where? Oh, here we go. Boss, one, two, three, four, five. All right, Pedro, see you, man. You stay safe, too. Oh, crazy. They all started on top of each other. It's a crazy scene of beat the walls up. And I'm dead. Okay, this is worth playing through. I'm gonna play through this dungeon right now. Let's do that. So we got this set um back to zero. We'll set the switches back to zero. They're all okay, they already are. I'll set the player back to the start of the dungeon. We'll play this dungeon, see how it plays with like all nine of those guys, but I'm I already know what to expect when I get into that boss room. There's like, gonna be like a crazy amount of those guys all on top of each other. I, my instinct says to take that down a little bit. Like there's nine shades right there. Maybe that should be more like five to five or seven, maybe. I don't know, five. Give it five for now. These guys need a really cool sound effect too. That would definitely help. Would you ever take their graphic away and only leave the actual shadow to make it harder to pinpoint location? Sure. Why not? Maybe in a different, um... Maybe in a more difficult dungeon? Okay, I gotta get the shield. And I should take away the map because it's like it's too easy with the map. Just taking away all the points on the map that the players explored already in the dungeon five. There we go. Okay, playing through this dungeon. Actually, let's play through from the from the overworld. Make sure everything works. Uh, Trying to remember where the entrance is. It's like on the right side of the screen, I think. Zero's guiding me. Thank you, Zero. Take me there, man. Oh, don't take me to the other one. Yeah, take me to that one. Let's 
Let's do this. Oh, it's all the way on the left side of the screen. Who knew? Alright, here it is. Okay. Save here. I need to go right though to get into this. So I come up to this pattern, yesterday's pattern. There's gotta be some item here though. Swordless dungeon is so small that it's like pretty simple to be able to find all its secrets. But this one's bigger, so you can't you don't really know. It's, I guess that's why they call them hidden, right? Good point. Very good point. I want to make sure one thing. I'm gonna cheat and run here for real quick. I shouldn't be able to meditate here. Oh, I don't have meditate? Oh, I, I accidentally deleted my meditate item. Okay, I gotta put that back in because otherwise we're not gonna be able to even test this dungeon. You get this in the previous Swordless Dungeon, so you have to have meditate to get into this one. No, wait, you don't necessarily do, huh? Shoot. I guess you I guess you could if you if you were smart enough though to get the cup before you got meditate you would already have the teleport item so you could teleport technically out of this dungeon go get the meditate skill in the other dungeon so meditate shouldn't work yet because I haven't got all three yeah okay good doesn't work yet
puzzle's not finished yet. But it'll be something cool. Something more more tricky than the other two. I think with that last, there was one more enemy I'm gonna throw into this dungeon, and that's a sneaky, like, thief that comes and steals an important item from you, and then he runs away to a different screen. So that guy should be pretty interesting to throw into this mix, too, to make this dungeon feel a little bit different. But still, there's something about this. I would like to make, the, make it feel more different. It still is really, it, it really feels a lot like the first uh, Swordless Dungeon, still. There's got to be a way to make them more distinct. Like maybe just maybe just more art actually would help. Whoa. That was kind of cool seeing them all come out. And it's neat how they kind of block off the life container. thinking you should you might be it might be better to just put the um to make that make it so you have to earn that life container like maybe there's only three like two or three of those shades and you have to defeat them I don't know. I kind of, I kind of like it the way it is. I guess with the, where you don't have to do it. How difficult would it be to make a game of this quality in Python? Um, I don't know. It depends on your Python engine. It, t it totally depends on the game engine you're using. If your game engine has shaders and it's cross-platform and it's fast. Um, you could, you might be able to pull it off. Okay, I'm going to check that in as it is. Pretty good. Pretty good start for the shades. Yeah, speed is pretty important for games. It would be... Python, that's one of the biggest things, yeah, it is It is kind of a hard thing with Python because it's not that fast. It's a totally interpreted language. It's not, you can pre-compile Python, but like it's still not that fast. Yeah. It's a cool language though. It's it's definitely a dope language. And I, I highly recommend learning it for beginners. Like if you're getting into game development and you want something simple to learn how to make games, Python's excellent because it's sort of C based. It's sort of sort of similar syntax to C, but a little more friendly and forgiving and higher level. True. It's true. Yep. If you're if you're only gonna publish your game on desktops, you you could probably get away with Python, especially if you use some like I mean if Python had some modules and stuff that you could compile. Live T C O D. What's that? What's that? What that? What what is that? What's that? What's up? Hi. What's up, EY? The Dorian Library. 
a, fa a free, fast, portable, uncomplicated API for roguelike developers providing an advanced true color console input and lots of other utilities. Hmm. There you go. I wonder how fast it is. I want to see screenshots. Man. Okay, that one's text. ASCII. But it looks cool. It's a cool ASCII looking. Definitely cool for, for an ASCII game. But hate them as snakes. <laughs> What's up, PMC? There you go. Look at this. This is actually an act. Wait, is this not ASCII? It's hard to tell if these are ASCII or not. That's ASCII too. Holy crap! That's surprisingly, I from the screenshot from like a that one too. Look at this. I didn't know you could do this good of art with ASCII. Crazy awesome. This must be Unicode characters or something. Because ZZT never looked this good. You guys have seen ZZT, right? ZZT is awesome. This is my very first video game I ever, ever really played. Made, you can make games in it. You can make your own worlds. Program your own characters and stuff. And all these sweet puzzles, and I never beat it. It was huge. Look at this. King's Quest. What? Oh, this is King's Quest with ZZT2. Cool. Alright, so there, there's Lab's TCOD. Yeah, I know, right? What color up was that? What's, what's this right here? Is this that also ASCII? This is definitely not ASCII right there. Okay. Next thing on the list today, I'm going to start off the effect where Jib gets... You get blocked in this one cave. And Jib goes to look for help. What's up, Red Sands? Morning, man. You think it won't be a startup language for other languages? You mean like a, a good language to learn, you mean, as a startup language? Or what other, what do you mean by startup? A red sands appears. Catch him. Throw out the little thing. What's that little thing called in Pokemon Go that you throw and you catch your Pokemons with? Is, is there a name for that? I'm sorry, I don't know. I've never played Pokemon. Any of the Pokemons. Bafu's dead today. Oh, he was here yesterday. It's a Pokeball. Oh. It's a Pokeball. Throw, I'm throwing out my Pokeball. I caught a Red Sands. Yes. Yes. A catchy ball? <laughs> now I don't now I don't know which one's true. Catchy ball or a Pokeball? Oh, oh, it's its own language with a good engine. I hear ya. Yeah. Alright, next, um, I'm gonna go 0, 1, no, 0, 0, negative 12. I want to not have defeated Dungeon 2. This is 0, oh. 0, 0. And, uh, um, let's go here. Yeah, as a web backend, it's perfect. Perfect language for that. Okay, yeah. Here is um, here's Zero's Cave, the very first Swordless Dungeon. So, uh, yeah, for the rest of the stream today, I'm gonna work on a little effect here. So when you go inside this cave, 
it's always been the plan where something would fall, like some either some rocks would fall down from the ceiling, or maybe this statue falls over or something, and it blocks your path. And Jib goes to look for help. And so Jib goes out of the cave, you're stuck inside this cave, and then you have to, you know, find your way through the Swordless Dungeon. So that's what we're going to do now. All right, Red Sands. Need to delete. Um, I gotta not have the cactus container. And I was just thinking this would be a good idea to um, put Put a cactus container in Swordless 2. Just want to write that down so I remember it while I was in my head. What happened to the second player playing as Jib? You can. Yeah. You can play as Jib. Totally. Local co op, man. Uh huh. Nice. What's the gill? Yeah, so all you gotta do to play the co-op, you just go into your input and set player two to be human. And then, yeah, if you've got a controller map, you gotta map a controller for player two, or um, or use the defaults or whatever. But I've got mine, mine mapped to these controls, so I can actually play as Jib. And then your A button, your A button scans things. Oops. And your B button does your shield if you have the shield. Oops. Time jib, I'm playing as jib, 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 jib. In the swordless dungeon? No, you can't. You never have two players in the swordless dungeons. Sorry, it's a single player only in the Swordless Dungeons. But if you're playing speed runs with the with the friend or whatever, you don't necessarily have to play the Swordless Dungeons. But the whole point of the Swordless Dungeon is to change up the gameplay style completely in the game, and that's there's no way to really do that without taking Jib out of the equation and the sword. So, yep, the Swordless Dungeons are single player only. Okay, so we need a good plot element so that Jib, so it explains the reason why Jib is not in the Swordless, the first Swordless dungeon. So I'm thinking what happens is right here, you're forced to walk along this skinny, narrow path here, and then when you hit like right about here, it triggers this statue to fall over in your path. I'm gonna start by drawing it. Draw some kind of pillar or something. Herbert, it's gonna fall over. I'll be right back. It's thirsty time. It's hot in here.
zero, one, kind of like this one. So I'm going to start by making it look a little more rickety, like it's about to fall over. And it needs to be wider, way wider. Let's just, the height is 64, so it needs to be at least 64, no, more than 64 tall. Yeah, totally. There'll be some kind of pressure plate type thing. I think it's going to be totally invisible though, but yeah. It's something you just walk over and that the thing falls over. The statue and then you're trapped and she best to go look for help.
That looks pretty good. It, f it falls over. It's all cracked. It falls into a few different pieces here. This is, I mean, this is good for an ending, just for the ending um, frame. So now I'll draw um, like the in-between frames from getting it from there to there. Starting with a few just roughly rotated versions of that. So at first it's going to go fall slower, like boom. So more frames at the top, like maybe one, two, three, four, five. Bam, five, like hits the ground, maybe bounces a little. So one, two, three, four. Yeah, four up on the top. So maybe each one of these only moves a few degrees. Yeah, cool. Boom. Boom. Oh, it's better to see it only once. Cool. Cool. That works. Nice.
then one last thing I'm going to do is move it up a pixel so I have room to do a little shading on the ground. Use this color at probably 20%, I think. It's usually what these are. 20? Yeah, 20. Draw some black. 20% opaque. It's going to be pretty much the same place right here on this frame. What's up, Space My Name? Welcome, man. What's going on? So awesome. Not much? Not much? How about me? Oh, the same thing, man. Just making this game that I love to make. You know? Uh, today I'm finally doing this one thing I've been planning to do for a long time where you get trapped in this cave at the beginning. So it kind of explains why Jib doesn't follow you into the Swordless Dungeon. Put this in. Which one is this?
Wait a minute, where's the statues? I guess they're in level. Oh yeah, it's, they're in level. That one was zero statue one, kind of. Call that one zero statue three. Zero Statue 3 release. Ah, I guess it's just gonna be Zero Statue 3. No. Yeah, it should be release. Nah. I guess I can do zero statue three. Okay, now that that's drawn, time to do the code part. All right, so inside this um, this cave, I want to get rid of the flames on the left, or maybe just move them down one. Yeah, so you're gonna, this, I gotta, next thing to do is convert this pillar here into a pillar that can fall over, move those flames down one, and then create a trigger thing right here that makes it all happen. So we'll save there. There's a special there's a pattern for this area. Here it is, underground to A. I think if I comment all this out, I can tell quickly. If I'm on the right function. Oh, no, that's not the right one. That's, oh, it's U3. Yeah, it's gotta be U3. Yeah, that's definitely it. Okay. Statues. So the light is going to be. Let's put the statue actually at zero.
trying to, I'm debating whether I should create a special statue tile or whether the statue should just know that it should be Yeah, I mean this statue could just know it's fine. Create statue tile. Okay, so it creates a regular statue. I was wondering if it did a regular one or the dungeon one. What's up, Boogie? What's up, man? What you doing today? Just chilling right on. Nice. Well, so far on this stream, we created a special enemy for the Swordless Dungeon. It's this shade enemy that's, like, really difficult to kill because all you can use is fire or lightning to kill it. And it's, like, scary. It, like, chases you and stuff. And now I'm making it so the rock, the pillar falls over in this um, Swordless Dungeon thing. So you get trapped. And you gotta... Jib goes looks for help and you go into the Swordless Dungeon. So, the goal is to make this, um, this pillar here fall over as soon as you, like, hit maybe about this point, and then Jib will go back out and look for help, and you have to continue on, and you get to learn how the, everything works in here. 212. Trapped is good. I knew you'd like that. I knew you'd like that. So it'll finally explain, you know, it'll finally explain why the hell Jib isn't with you in the Swordless Dungeon. So now it's just, um... Okay, we need a Boolean. Falls over, perhaps. Constants is underground entrance. And area pause dot y is zero. There we go. We got the falls over entity. If it falls over, Then it's always R3. I 
Oh wait, this does need to be a special one. Oh, this needs to be a special one for sure. Okay, let's render this out again. Zero, statue, falls. Falls. Zero, statue, falls. I'll make another variable here, format falls. So this is the format for the falls animation. Let's call it zero statue falls. And if falls over, we have images.format falls, otherwise not. And that's it, except for this bit here. R is always going to be R. Just gets set to zero basically for this one. Okay, cool. Yeah, it looks like it's about to fall right over, anyways. And good, the other statues are the same. Good, and yeah, these statues are the same too. Okay, so now the flip X part needs to be wait, how does this guy start? He starts looking to the right. Sorry. Oh, he starts looking to the right, but why didn't that set flip X? Because X. Oh, we set a breakpoint here. X is 11. X is 11? Oh, right. Of course, it's greater than. So flip deck should be true here. Okay, good. So this is, I'm going to, instead of messing with this code, which is already making all these statues look fine, I'm just going to flip this image over. That way the code doesn't have to change. And then the next step is going to be, so we've already got this boolean if it falls over, so we can go ahead and place another entity if it does fall over that is a trigger. It's, and I think an exit component would work well here because exit components automatically can call fluxes. And so I'll create a special flux for all this because there's a lot of custom stuff that needs to happen here. The, the rock needs to fall over. Jim needs to go look for help. 
That definitely looks pretty teetery already. I can definitely see it just going, <laughs> falling right over. I think though that this, um, this, um, light, yeah, with the light, negative one, this, it, or negative two, that one, negative one, and So this is making room for it to fall down, a little empty spot. Invalid area, what? Oh, this needs to be H2 plus. I like it, but I think maybe the maybe the opposite of the light should also have a little empty spot, so it looks more. I don't know. I guess this is kind of one one area where symmetry feels good. There's already a dissymmetry with the two. Um, two different objects here, so it's nice to have a tiny bit of symmetry too. Yeah, all right, cool, now we're all set up. Now we all gotta do is put a little exit component here that triggers this thing to fall over. It's always better to do it with data. I was just thinking, maybe I should create it with code, but nope. Never a good idea to, to do it with without data. So trigger falls. Trigger statue fall. Call it that. It's no render component, no position, just an exit. Collision, exit. That's all it needs, no render. Collision category, exit size, one block. Flux, mm. we have no name for this new flux yet. So we're like, I guess we'll leave it as like elevator down for now. So we create the entity of this auto entity. Um, I 
So uh, x minus 1, y plus 2, something like that. What's up, Keenan? Hey, Keenan Woodall, I haven't seen your name in a while. Hope you're doing good, man. How do you organize everything so you continue to add new stuff without tangling up your project files? That's a tough question. I don't know how to really do it for, it's. I guess it's kind of an individual thing. You kind of have your own organizational system. But for me, I try and make things as data-driven as possible. So, I mean, th this is a pretty disorganized file here with all, all lots and lots of entities and objects and stuff like that in it. But at least it's data-driven, you know? That part's good. And then it is kind of nice to have, instead of like all these entities all piled into one text file, I could put them all in individual files, and I do that for a lot of other things like foes and uh, you know pillars things like that I do try and put things data into like a single file that helps if you have so if you have like all your entities um, you know listed in separate files I guess that can kind of help because then they can quickly be loaded so you know this is kind of disorganized in the sense that I can't quickly jump to anything but this is really quick and awesome because I can jump to anything like an ice pillar for example, I can just quickly open that file. I don't know. Other than that, it's just kind of a personal however you prefer to organize stuff. How do you organize stuff? I need some tips here, man. My organization system is not that great yet. We'll see what happens when we step on this trigger. It's got the flux elevator down, so it might trigger an elevator. Oh yeah, totally. <laughs> it elevated me back to the top of these rocks. Oh my god, I'm on the rocks. Oh, that was cool. Let's do that again. That was fun. Yeah, you're glad to know you're not the only one. Good, I'm glad I'm not the only one too. Where's it at? Oh, it's, it's making me stop on it though. I don't want to stop on it. I guess I can make it that so it doesn't stop unless you're... Look at this, I'm on the rocks. Ah! That was weird. Didn't do any Z. Figure that I just fell too fast. Okay, so next thing, I need a special kind of flux. I think there's the only theory on this subject. Here, here. I'm glad nobody, nobody really has any good... Right? If you if you say you have a good organization system, then please help us. Somebody out there, help us! Uh... K flux. Um, okay, so we're gonna call this the K flux. Pillar fall over, like, lose jib. We'll just call it statue fall. K-flux statue falls. Statue fall. Whatever, I don't know. Organization is a hopeless cause. <laughs> Good. Right on. Put it anywhere. Any old where. Any old how. Stuff.cpp things.cpp other stuff and things.cpp or you can put them all in one
urgent, not so urgent. Not going to do it. Not even going to start that project. Never going to do that one. Too much work. Okay, next up we need um, flux.cpp so we can do this. This is uh, zero steel. It's kind of like, kind of like, uh, I don't know. Nice. Good job, Salad Dongs. What's the secret? What do you, what do you, what do you, do you have any tips? Alright, got this uh, new phase hooked up, so this should be able to run. Hopefully. You organize by the types of files. Oh, like what type? I always think I should at least alphabetize these functions so it's a little easier to find things, right? Source files go in the root. Then I have a data folder with subfolders for the type of data. Uh-huh. Shaders, textures, and an external folder for headers I'm included. And then a misc folder. The misc folder, yeah. And then you don't even organize inside. Right on. So we'll do a lens shake at least so we know that it's, it's doing something. Now let's see if it works. And also if it if it triggers the phase just by moving across it. You might have to move, stop on it. We'll fix that. Wouldn't want the player running right by this invisible trigger. They gotta hit it no matter what. Yeah, nice, it worked. Oh, it works again. And again. All right, cool. Now we can just set it up so it's doing stuff. Like making the rock fall over. The statue does its animation and changes stuff. Changes the like, collision, removes its exit component. So we need a name for that entity. Because it doesn't already have one.
So we'll add a name component. We'll call it Statue Falls. Okay, so now we can get that entity. And uh, do some stuff like uh, make it fall over so statue dot render dot set animation no, I don't have a render component for that or I mean there's no there's no profile so profile Oh, it does have a pillar profile already. Ooh, we gotta just render this the old school way. And names animate render dot no statue dot render dot sprite kit anim zero statue falls. Found repeat zero. Um, any oh, wait, we might want to do this after tick schedule after update. Store the statue ID. Let me remove component, exit component, so we don't do this twice. Okay, let's see if it falls over and we can't do this twice. And then it'll be like change the collision component so you can't walk past Pat that anymore. And then make Jib go, ah, and some dialogue happen, and then Jib goes and looks for help. Uh, none of that happened. Okay, maybe it didn't fall, find this here. Name component find statue falls. You... you quit your job and got a better one? Yeah, congrats. Nice, man. Can you, is it one of those jobs you can tell about the details? Or you want to tell about the details, or is it one of those jobs where it's like you'd have to shoot us if if we took if you told us the details? Nothing. What? Why nothing? Does it not even? Oh, I'm in the phase ending. I've been coding all this in the wrong phase. What the hell? <laughs> That's embarrassing. Nyan IT for a law firm. Nice. Secret agent. <laughs> cool, congrats, dude. Congrats. That's awesome. Try this so uh, in the right function, shall we? Hope I didn't mess anything else up there. 
constants, flux. Okay, good. It looks like I just added the statue false thing. But ending did have a okay, ending did have a virtual void end, but it wasn't doing anything, so it doesn't really matter if I remove it. Might as well. Thomas, what's up? It's been a minute since you've been on the stream, dude. I hope you're doing good. Kapow. Nice, you played? You died to the ice boss and forgot that you chose permadeath? Oh, I've done that so many times. Uh, right on. I'm, I'm glad you had fun. Yay. It's going to get even more fun. There's going to be there's a lot more fun stuff planned. That's so, oh man, the, dying in permadeath mode though. I've done that like two or three times and totally forgot as well that I chose. One time I played in permadeath mode and got like an hour into the game and then I simply just died on purpose. I like ran into a bunch of enemies because like I just want to reset and go back to the beginning of this dungeon. But I forgot I was in permadeath mode. It's funny as hell. So I'm glad you had fun. You only get paid 2k more a year? Because that's pretty good though. Start earning more. Yeah. Nice. You ask for promotion, you're like, I quit. I don't get no promotion, I quit in. Right on, you're doing fine? What you been what you been doing, Thomas? What's going on in your world? Oh, nice. It worked this time. Jib's just like, I don't care. Okay, next we gotta go and change the collision component so we can't walk past it anymore. And we shouldn't... Oh, we gotta get rid of that exit component. Oh, because the exit component thing also needs its own name. So trigger statue fall. This thing needs name. Trigger statue fall. Falls, falls, whatever. Main component, find. Trigger, statue, falls. You're an uncle now? Whoa! Join Summer? Cool, man. Right on. Congratulations. Space. Oh, you worked there for four years? Yeah, dude, they lost a chance. No, no. No promotion for four years of your dedication? That's like significant just to be able to stay at a job that long. Okay, good. Yeah, the exit component's gone now. Next thing will change the collision for the statue. So if I made it three times as big we need it to be one, if it's already one, it needs one, two on this side and one, two on that side. So that means it needs to be five times as big. Oh, size dot X needs to be five times as big. Mm. 
I stuck here? Yeah, I'm stuck. All right, cool. Nice, 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 nice. So the next thing we need to get Jib to be able to... Um, oh, that collision, that needs to be a different kind of collision component because Jib can just walk right through it. Oh, and we can go... This is simple. Just delete that whole component there instead of doing this the long way. And this so oh, this whole flux doesn't need to be this long. Maybe like a second. First might be a little longer. Um, once the whole the dialogue and everything is done for this. Yeah, he'll just hover around the water. Yep. So yeah, that's the point. Like, why does he go through the statue? I don't get it. But yeah, so the point is, Jib goes and is supposed to look for help. Next, is that entity gone? Yeah, nice. The entity's gone. Okay, cool, man. This is all set up. It's almost ready to, ready to be, dialogue time. Ah, what's that? Oh, gotta make this smarter so it doesn't do this every single time you come off the screen, too. Wait, that time? Oh, what? <laughs> yeah, it just needs to remember. Leaning Tower, Robert! Norbert, Robert, Herbert, there's so many Berts. I think it was Robert. It's probably Robert. Robert's a good name. So we'll need the entity or the area for this because we're going to set some special area data. Uh. Remember, area, set tile, data, given statue.position.pause flags one. I think this is how this works. Set tile data. Yeah. It's just the number, whatever number you want to put here. Okay, so that should still that should remember that the tile, the tile will remember now that it fell over already, and then an area creation right here. We'll go already fell over. If this get tile data, it already fell over if it's greater than zero. So if it already fell over, we just need to grab the last frame of the animation. Yeah, yeah, totally. The screen shake lasts way too long there. It's just like, I haven't changed that yet. So, um, getting um, the animation
and setting the last frame. I think there's a there's a set sprite frame. Maybe it's just get a sprite frame kit. Get sprite frame. Oh yeah, it's from an it. Get a yeah. Okay, so it's this. Negative one gets the last frame. And now if frames not equal to null, then we can change render dot sprite set sprite frame there. Oh, and let's change that screen shake too. Make it like one second at first. Wait, this is hold on. I think that was the strength, and this is the duration. Strength, yeah, it's, I know it's strength duration. Man. Yeah. Oh, wow, duration strength. Oh. <laughs> you think you're right, but you're not. That's the story of my life. Is the head plan to be propped up at the entrance to fully block it? What? What do you mean propped up at the entrance? No, it's it doesn't matter. You're as a player you're not able to get here in the water. So as long as this path here is blocked, you're good. And I want I want the entrance to be open so that Jib can go and look for help. That's the whole point of this is to make is that there'll be a story element here where Jib, where you, you and Jib talk, and you're like, Jib, whoa, we're tra I'm trapped. Go look for help, Jib. And Jib goes around, flies around, and then goes back out the door and looks for help. So, yeah, that's a great idea too, Hanko. Make it crack, and then he turns around totally. So let's see if it worked though to just make it save. Nice. We came back on the area, everything, oh, whoops, except for that part. Let's change that, so. That's good, got two things done already in the, today's stream. Okay, cool, come back. Still blocked, right on. Yay, all right, this is a good start to, for this, this effect and stuff. I'm good, uh, so that's it for today's stream though, I gotta get some dinner. My, my my energy tanks are... So, yeah, so the next steps, I'll, I'll make this look and feel a lot better. So, when the, um, when you walk past it, I like that idea of making it delay a little bit, some cracking noises, some more like little visual cues, and then it falls over, and then there's some dialogue between you and Jib, and then Jib goes to look for help, and then you go on, because it's your only choice, and you must figure out what to do with this cactus. Whoa, dang. This stream's a lot longer than I thought. Yeah, so, um, yeah, have a good day, you guys. It was good chatting with you and stuff, and thanks for watching, and see you next time. Have a good one, everybody. <laughs>